So the problem states, what is the electric field at a distance x away from the center of a thin line charge with a uniform linear charge density lambda and length L? Using this result, write the electric field at a distance x above the center of a square loop of length L. So you have a line charge with the uniform um, linear charge density lambda, so it's just positive all along. And it's length L, so um, our top point would be L over 2, the negative, bottom point would be negative L over 2. Um, and then our, we're defining this as our x-axis, and this is our point of interest. Um, so this line charge is a distance x away. Um, so if we take a tiny element um, and call it dy, it would have a electric field that's going towards the point charge because positive charges radiate outward, have electric field lines that radiate outward. And this would have um, an x and y component since electric field is a vector. If we take another charge on the opposite side, um, it would also have um, x and y components. And we realize that the positive x components of both would add, while the y components would cancel each other out because they are equal and opposite. So, um, so when we want to calculate, oh yeah, and then um, this is x, we're defining this as x, and this is theta, and then the hypotenuse is going to be r. And now we are going to find the electric field. So, um, the electric field of our tiny element is going to be dE equals kdq over r squared. Um, so that charge, the, ch the amount of charge that tiny element holds is equal to k lambda dy. So dQ is equal to lambda dy. And then r squared <clears throat> and then it, the electric fields add, uh, add in the x component. So x, k, y, k lambda dy over r squared is equal to cosine theta. Cosine theta because this angle is theta. And we have um, our adjacent side and hypotenuse side. So that's cosine. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, sorry, adjacent is x. And our hypotenuse is r, so it'll be x over r. <clears throat> so then we write k k lambda dy over r squared times x over r. And then k lambda x are our constants, dy over r cubed is what we have to integrate. x is a constant because the distance doesn't change from the line to the point of interest. Um, so we're going to integrate dy over r cubed, dy over r cubed. So we're gonna, I'm going to rewrite the triangle here. And so um, we write our, our hypotenuse, which is r. And then um, our opposite side is y, and then adjacent adjacent side will be our x. So cosine theta is equal to x over r, adjacent over hypotenuse, and then it'll be r equals x secant theta, because 1 over cosine theta is secant. And then tangent theta is equal to y over x. Multiplying x by tangent theta will get y equals tangent theta. <clears throat> dy is equal to x secant squared theta d theta. And now we could plug this in. into the integral replacing dy and r cubed and we'll get um, so our dy is x 
our dy is integral x secant squared theta d theta. And then our cube is going to be x cubed secant cubed theta. And then we cancel any drawn meters that are the same. And we get 1 over x squared left over and then cosine theta d theta. And when we integrate cosine theta d theta, we will get sine theta. So then we get sine theta over x squared. And sine theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that's y over r. So y over x squared r. So we integrate that, and we're going to plug that back into um, dex. So then we get k lambda x over x squared y and this x numerator cancels and we left with one on the bottom and then we get y over r and they're integrating from l over 2 to negative l over 2. r and then we get equals to k lambda over x which is equal to y over r is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now we're finally going to inter, uh, integrate from l over 2 to negative l over 2. So we get k lambda x. So those are our constants. Those are outside. And then y is a length, so that's going to be l over 2 over square root x squared plus l over 2 squared, which is l squared over 4. And then we get negative l over 2 over square root of x squared plus l over 2 squared, which is l squared over 4. And then subtracting those, we will get our final electric field of the line charge as k lambda, k lambda l over x squared plus l squared 4, over 4, in the x hat direction. This is our answer for part A of this problem. Now in part B, um, we are going to use the result that we come up from A to write the electric field at a distance above the center of a square loop of length L. So first we're going to draw out our coordinate system. So we're going to label our z-axis, our y-axis, and our x-axis. And what's going to make the square loop are, four, are going to be four line charges. So we're going to have one line charge drawn here and then our second line charge, and our third and our fourth. And then we're going to label the point of interest, which is uh, lies on the x-axis. So we're going to leave this point P, and the coordinates will be x, 0, 0. And so if we write out the electric field from one line charge, it's going to actually, um, the, the electric field is actually coming at an angle. And since we are using the result from A, the E field will add in the X direction. Um, and it has vector components. So they add, the vector components will add in the X direction while they cancel in the other. And the distance to the point of interest is not going to be x. Um, it's replaced by r. And E field is going to be at an angle, as we stated. And it's going to, and we're only adding the x components. So we write ex equals 4, because there's four line charges. And then k lambda l over r, because x is replaced by r, 
and then at r squared plus l squared 4, and then it's going to be an angle cosine theta, or hypotenuse and our adjacent sides is going to be cosine theta, and then we are going to go ahead and write um, replace cosine theta with um, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be um, our x over our x over r. And r in this case will just be x squared plus y squared. y is equal to l over 2. That squared is l squared over 4. So we get k lambda l over k lambda l over Sorry, I wrote messed up. Okay, so k lambda l over x squared, square root, um, x squared, well, cosine theta, and then x square root, x squared, plus l squared 4, and then um, x squared plus l squared over 4 plus L squared over 4. So what I did is I replaced R with uh, X squared plus L squared over 4. And then I'm going to replace cosine theta with X over uh, R. So we write then 4k lambda l over square root x squared plus l squared 4. And then um, x square root x squared plus l squared over 2. l squared over 2 because um, l squared over 4 plus l squared over 4 is going to be l squared over 2. And then for cosine theta, it's going to be x over r, and r is just x squared plus l squared over 4. And how I got l squared over 4, I'm going to repeat that, that's y squared. And then we get our total electric field for the square loop as 4k lambda lx over x squared plus l squared over 4 because square root times the square root will be just x squared plus l squared over 4. And then we get x squared plus l squared over 2 in the x hat direction. And this is the final answer for part B.